This is your weekly trip to paradise, Louisiana style, with Gary Rasponi and Don Dubuque. Paradise, Louisiana is presented by Demco, your touchstone energy cooperative. Pods, moving and storage, solved. Baton Rouge Coca-Cola Bottling Company, Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change, Louisiana Fish Fry Products, and by CCA Louisiana and the CCA Louisiana Star Tournament. Hey, welcome to Bedrock Boudin, Cajun Meats and Dine. And we are, look at what they got out here for Hey, holiday here. edition. It's holiday time. And if you think this looks good, uh, we got in there sausage and those famous uh, sausage, pepper cheese boudin, stuffed and chicken, chicken wraps. Yeah, and boudin balls. Boudin balls. Woo, woo. Oh, that does look pretty, doesn't I, it? It is. Everything looks good, and it? it? smells good. I don't so, know if I can keep you from tearing into that well, before the show not, is you're over. You're not going to be I'm going to do my we, best. we got to move on now. As soon as we move on, but... Uh, yeah, say let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Yeah, we had look, it. Look, some of the snow. pictures I got, dear, they look like they were coming from Colorado, North Dakota, somewhere. The snow in the background made the deer move. The redfish didn't slow them down. No. Speckled trout, it hurt them a little bit. Even went out no wind. So uh, a lot of it was based on the weather. We got good fishing and hunting reports coming up, and uh, we got a lot of seasons coming up. Going to be starting soon. So. It's kind of a shame that the busiest fishing and hunting times of the year coincide with the busiest holiday schedule where people are going to parties and traveling and visiting friends and family. It all happens at one time. I know. And you do it with the family. But I wouldn't give it up because we got the kids there. Sure. The, the kids can't always go to camp. We can sacrifice, you know, one weekend for a Christmas party or being around there. It, it's nothing better than Christmas to me. So I'm looking forward to it. And Dinah, I'm, I, I'm looking forward to it right after Christmas because I got a bunch of hunts and fishing trips set up. A couple of them were canceled. I'm going to be making a trip in a week or so uh, with Mr. Nicky Savoy. Savoy won that, that big redfish tournament. And you're going to see how he did it. And we're going to go down there to where he lives in La Rose. And uh, we're going to be with the Tito man. Uh, I was supposed to have that footage for you this week, but. Uh, Tuesday and Wednesday wasn't a good day to be so on So for the Nicky, that was life after football, huh? Absolutely. Fishing life, right? Uh, I'll tell you what, he is tremendous. He's a great big guy, too. too. He's, but he's tremendous fishing. He's always in the money. So we got the H&H &H fishing Ooh, and the rodeo tough report. tournament for the kayak guys. We'll talk about that. They tough. And then, uh, well, we got a lot of news items. We got a new fishing spot for you. Well, not really new but an improved fishing spot in Cocodry. If you fish down there, CCA's building a reef. We're also going to tell you how to get your items on the calendar. This is the time of the year. If you're planning out your event for your organization for next year, we'll tell you how you can get that to us. Also, we have the hunting report. As you mentioned, a lot of deer pictures coming in. We're in a, almost the peak of deer season. Most areas are either at the rut or in pre-rut right now. Also, we're going to do a little feature on how to send those photos and how to get good video if you're an amateur from some of the pros, Chris Lecoq, our professional photographer and editor, is going to come sit in and give us a few tips on that. Well, you know, besides that, it's Christmas time. you got family pictures, so you can carry them over and use them for when you take family pictures, any picture. So when you take a good photo, there's nothing better. Yeah. Can't do much when you got an ugly family, though, huh? Yeah, oh, I, I love them all. Can, huh? Just think how people <laughs> felt in my family. I still feel love. <laughs> you know, I ain't never been too pretty. All right, we also got the Berkeley Abu Garcia Fishing Report. It's all coming up from Bergeron's Boudin, Cajun Meats and Restaurant. And you're watching right, Paradise, well, Louisiana. I can't, I can't help it. <laughs> Don't tempt me like that. <laughs> Stay tuned for more Paradise, Louisiana. Voted Best of Louisiana Outdoors three years in a row. It was the night before Christmas, and out in the yard, you stumbled upon a Benny's gift card. The most versatile card around is such a treat. A gift to make their car spiffy, sparkling, and neat. With a Benny's gift card, there's so much to do. So gift a card for them and get a free car wash for you. Pod's moving in storage. I need to clean out my study. We'll deliver a container. My brother-in-law's moving in. Maybe he'll help you pack. He's lazy. 
we can refer some professionals. It's just until he finds work. We can keep things at our storage center for as long as it takes. I am not happy about this. Or you can keep your things on site for quick unloading. Did you say freeloading? I said unloading. I heard freeloading. I'm sure you did. Store on site or let us drive your things to our secure storage center. Pods, moving in storage, solved. Welcome to the news segment of Paradise, Louisiana. Some really good news today, Gary. Uh, CCA announcing the expansion of the fishing reef over near Cocodre. And you know, those reefs have been quite successful, and what a great partnership that is with CCA and Shell and the other partners that helped make that possible. Chevron, bunch of them. Wildlife all and fisheries all participate in it. And uh, yeah, yeah, the expansion, you know, as one has been there, I think has been there, one of the oldest ones well, has been there. The Lake Pel out of Lake Pelto. Uh, looking forward, it's starting already, no, no, no. and uh, you never know. And I believe CCA, if you go on their website, cclla.org or .com, you can find the, the, the coordinates to get out there if you're not familiar with those places. Well, so, that, well, kudos to CCA, Shell, Wildlife and Fisheries, and all their partners in getting that reef expansion. Uh, if you're going to be fishing out this time of the year, unfortunately we had some sad news. Boating accident by you pigeon. Uh, two men went overboard. One was uh, able to swim to safety. He had to be freezing. It happened at night. He wasn't picked up till 5.30 the next morning. He made it to his camp and he waved down a, a, poding, a, a passing boater. Uh, the other gentleman, probably hypothermia, haven't got the final uh, result of cause of death as of now, but you, you gotta think falling in the water, as cold as it's been, me the man wearing a you know personal flotation device and you know, I think all of us are lax in not wearing those uh, PFDs, and, uh, life jackets, whatever you want to call them, all the time. But this time of the year, you got to wear that. If you're duck hunting, if you're fishing in cold weather winter time, you never know when something's going to happen, and, and it can happen so quickly. And if you've ever been in ice cold water, it takes your breath away. You cannot function. That's right. You you've only got so many minutes, and that's why a lot of people survived over there by fighting and keeping warm and and till they get to the bank. But, you know, we're, we're a little phony. I, I got to admit, you know, I, I preach life jackets, preach life jackets, and I don't do it. But like you saying, and when we duck hunting, the water is that deep sometimes, okay? Mm -hmm. But if you fall or if you get, you hit something and you fall down that water and you hit your head, right. unless your ja a jacket will hold you up where at least you can breathe till you find you. But uh, I don't know what it is about being in a bay boat them. They got them in the boat. They might not be as comfortable as you can do. But uh, I admit sometimes we don't, I don't wear them in a bay boat. I wear them constantly in a bass boat or if I'm hunting cold and I got boots on. Or if you're alone. That's a, oh, definitely. Definitely if you're by yourself yeah. at all times because you got nobody to help you. You fall away from the boat. Till the boat motor, gets till away. the motor, yeah. you definitely ought and to have remember you bat kill bat switch. Bat toe, tilt, fall over. Make sure you got a working kill switch too. All right, so much for that. Uh, some more good news, whooping crane population. You know, those very unique birds uh, were native here in Louisiana back in the 1950s. They went into extinction. We have brought them back with the help of Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries, Chevron Corporation being one of the major sponsors. There are 12 more now juvenile whooping cranes that have been added to the flock. 
uh, part of them are uh, near Jennings, the other one are out by Rockefeller Wildlife Refuge. These additional 12 brings to an estimated population now of 72 whooping cranes in Louisiana. Great opportunity to see those majestic birds. And they go remind everybody, shouldn't be shooting any crane, you know. They look a whole lot different than a goose. A goose is more big, big bodied, no long neck. So, you know, we got the conservation order, a lot of snow geese. They don't, they don't look like any other thing but a crane. Okay? If you don't so, believe in conservation, don't shoot them because the fine is enormous for a whooping crane. Yeah, you better believe it. All right, talk about getting your calendar items into the Advocate. The Advocate newspaper is a very good source of season dates, tournaments, rodeos, uh, meetings, different uh, events related to the outdoors, and people need to, to get their information to the paper now. That's right. The deadline is December 22nd. That's to get, I don't matter if you got a date next December, whenever your dates are, you get them to joke. It's, it works as a clearinghouse. It helps, I, I know I go to it every week, and uh, Joe, <laughs> Joe's been doing it, and he's still doing it, so for some reason, I guess he's working on contract, he's supposed to be retired, but Joe and them, he put out a note. Uh, some people say you can email, I, I thought you could go to outdoors at theadvocate.com, and just send that, and Joe will pick it up. But whatever you do, try to get him at December 22nd. Uh, it'll be published in the Advocate. It'll come out in the paper, and it'll be on their website Thursday, January the 4th. So it, 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 it's, a, it's a great tool in the world. You knew and I fuss mm -hmm. about people having events on the same day. Before you set an event, check that calendar out. Be surprised. So it'll increase your your people at your event, and, and it'll also uh, keep them from having a conflict. And don't forget to send them to us here at Paradise, Louisiana. Just simply email it, gary at paradiselouisiana.com. And what you need to include when you do these releases, by the way, the event, the name of the event, the date for sure, the time, the location, a contact person's name or email address in case there are questions, and as many details as you and can And most provide. of them got a flyer. You send me that flyer, right. but like you said, at least three weeks in, in advance and give us a chance to put it on for a couple of weeks. All right, up next, the H&H &H Tournament Report will tell you about one that took place in the snow, a very difficult tournament, but several anglers came through. Right back with that on Paradise, Louisiana. I'm John Jackson, and you know we always say we gather our groceries out the bayou. Whether it's freshwater, saltwater, catfish, redfish, you have tons of choices when it comes to fish in Louisiana. But when I fry fish, there's only one choice, and that's Louisiana fish fry. My new favorite, the Cajun fish fry, has the perfect amount of cornmeal, corn flour, and the perfect mix of spices that really bring the heat. Hey, if you're craving Cajun, go look for the bright red bag at your local grocers. Bring home the taste of Louisiana with Louisiana Fish Fry.
Welcome to the H and H Tournament Report, Jerry. Tournaments this time of year, not so many. I'll be coming up though, especially the Bass oh, Circuit will be January. kicking off in January. We know that's going to be here. But they did close out the Bayou Coast Kayak Fishing Club Tournament Series with a championship tournament. First down, one, first, first one, one they ever had. down in Cocodree, and boy, they were greeted by stiff winds, some uh, freezing temperatures, and uh, I believe there were 29 contestants who braved it. The way it was set up was a combination. You got to bring in five speckled trout, two slot redfish, and the combined total weight took it. And to, to my surprise, I, I talked to Brendan Bayard with the Coast Kayak Club, and he predicted, you know, we thought somebody's going to stumble on some speckled trout, find a deep hole, you know, and catch them, but <laughs> nobody caught a speckled trout the whole time. Not a one. You should have been a champion when you did that. And that had a big speckled trout. But, uh, First place was Chuck Beheim, 14.82 pounds. That's two red fish. That's not bad. That's over seven pounds. Pretty good. Average. He had the big one too, I think. Yeah. Right? Uh, uh, yeah. The big one's 8.48. He had the big fish. The second was uh, Lee Melvin at 13.55 pounds. And third, guess who? Our guy, Kaylin Kay Johnson. <laughs> Kaylin Johnson with 12.70. And uh, I can imagine those conditions with that stone. But you know, it was funny. Uh, when it was at my house, I, I stayed hemmed up in the house and canceled everything. <laughs> I, I was watching football games yeah. and high school football games. It was on T, thanks to CST. Uh, I watched them all. There were some great athletes. Some of them I know are going to be coming to LSU, and some of them are uh, Nichols or Southeast and what McNeese. Some of them I'm scared are going to be going out of town. Though. That's what makes me sick. But going back, to, it wasn't no wind. The snow was falling and falling. It wasn't blowing. Mm -hmm. You know, the wind wasn't blowing. It went outside. It was beautiful. Some of the kids were out there. I even, we took some pictures with some newborn babies in my family. We didn't leave them out there long, but got them out there. To, it's something they can look back out when they were three weeks old, three days old, one of them. Uh, you know, one of the things that somebody mentioned to me, I was at a hunting camp in the snow, and it was pretty thick. We had about four to five inches on the ground, and the trees were flocked, snow was everywhere, that the sound is magnified in the snow. It's almost like, and if you've never been in an insulated recording studio for radio or television, that's kind of what it sounds like. It's just very still, very quiet, and the sound kind of reverberates back, and that's from that snow. I know, but when that snow starts melting, it's worse than a rain because you <laughs> yeah. think you're going to go quick. out there and you're in the woods. <laughs> Gary Krauss and I did on that rabbit hunt up in North Louisiana. And then I went out to get the mail. The sun was shining and everything. I got wet. I should have brought an umbrella because all the trees there were mm -hmm. melting and they were falling off. So you got to do it. But uh, it, it's, it's not often South Louisiana, but I tell you what, when it happens, the uh, only thing bad about it is a lot of power outages. Yeah, well, it the trees, cold. you know, get the weight on the limbs and they're breaking. Yeah. They're not trimmed around the power poles. You do lose power, and it ain't the best time to lose power when it's freezing. Before we move off this tournament report, something needs to be talked about. Uh, a lot of people by now know there was a, a cheating event that took place in a kayak tournament. Uh, someone digitally altered the photographs to make it look like, altered the ruler size to make it look like the redfish that would have won a $2,500 kayak looked bigger than what it actually was. The individual admitted to it. He was very lucky, I think, in that the kayak club and also Massey's, who sponsored a catch photo and release tournament, decided not to press charges because we've got a statute in the Louisiana law. If you are caught cheating, it's called a fraudulent hunting or fishing contest entry. And if it's an amount of $2,500 like this kayak or more, uh, that is considered a felon, and you can be charged with that. And it's happened. We've had cases of that have uh, gone through, and people have been convicted of, of uh, fraudulent hunting and fishing contests. And, you know, I was thinking about that during this, this coquetry tournament. Here it is. It's brutally cold. People are out there, I mean, just fishing their heart out, putting up with the elements, and then here you got somebody that just cheats to win a thing like that. That is pretty well despicable, and this individual's it's been really chastised. It's really over my head. I don't, I, don't know how they, I don't know how them tournaments work with the photo contest, but... Well, basically, yeah. you catch it, you take a photo next to a ruler, you release the fish. You turn your photo in as the right. entry, and it's a measurement thing. It's not a weight thing. Well, he altered the ruler digitally to make it look like a 41-inch redfish was a 44-inch redfish, which would have wanted the kayak for him. And he was busted, and then he finally admitted that he had done it. 
So that he's uh, been banned from tournaments and kicked out of the club and a lot of other repercussions. Any, anybody, but he's very fortunate that he how wasn't how big, criminally prosecuted. Anybody kick his ass? Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> but uh, he, didn't, he didn't walk away with the first place prize. That was, that was not awarded to him. Uh, so anyway, that kind of brings up something, another topic for another day. You know, all these fishing tournaments and rodeos and, and big buck contests and big turkey contests, do they really have a positive or negative effect on those industries and on those sports? Because it does promote and motivate people to do things they normally would not do. That's good for your, that's good do. for your radio show. But it bring up a good idea because our next feature is about how to take that picture the right way. The and, right way, yeah, don't alter give, it. And give honor to the to your harvest. We'll do that, plus our Paradise, Louisiana hunting report, and that'll be followed by the Berkeley Abu Garcia fishing report. We're at Bergeron's Boudin Cajun Meats and Restaurant in Port Allen, where you're watching Paradise, Louisiana. The best part about being a member of a Touchstone Energy Cooperative is that it's your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. That's the power of your co-op membership. Demco, your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. Hey y'all, it's Sam Barbera. I'm with the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries Foundation. The foundation is a nonprofit that raises funds and provides support for the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries Department. We assist with numerous projects like black bear, whooping crane, bald eagle, as well as family, youth, and women's workshops. For all of the information on the foundation, visit LAWFF.org. We need your support to help our wildlife and fisheries. Visit LAWFF.org. Org. Pause moving in storage. We just sold our house. Congratulations. We have two weeks to move. We'll, we'll deliver a few containers. Our new home's not ready. No problem. You can store things with us while you're between homes. We might need help. We'll refer trusted packers. We'll be staying at my brother's. Well, that sounds... He has kids of his own. Well... Five of them. Ma'am? Help. Trust us for local and long distance moving and store at our storage centers. Pods, moving in storage, solved. Welcome back to Paradise, Louisiana. With me is Chris Lecoq, our photographer, editor. And Chris, you get a lot of photos and videos sent in. Some good, some not so good, and some really pretty bad. So in an effort to try to help people get good photos, take good photos and video, we decided to offer a few tips. As far as the photographs go, lighting is, is usually a problem when they're taking photos. You want to make sure that the sun is in the face of the person that you're taking the picture of. Keep the sun at your back, that way they get it lit up real well. Fishermen and hunters always have hats on. Ask them to cock their hat back so you can see their face light up. Uh, position the trophy, whether it's ducks or deer, in a very respectful manner. You gotta remember, not everyone watching this program is an avid hunter, and sometimes people can get turned off when they see deer, tongue sticking out, blood, open cavities, uh, and, and try to get the, the, the trophy uh, shot in this natural setting. It always looks better if it's in the woods or in the natural habitat where the animal was taken. Uh, hold it up so it, it does look respectful. Uh, I certainly don't ever like to see, you know, animals hanging by their hind legs with the cavities open and blood all over the ground. And to, and to people who are into hunting and they butcher deer, there's nothing to that. But you got to be sensitive of other people's feelings because it's going to come back in the terms of people who are not opposed to hunting not having quite so favorable opinion of it when they see things like that. Fish pictures, live fish will be dead fish every time. Uh, I'm not so against a lineup of fish because it shows what you caught, but holding up a fish on the boat, in the surf, with the, the, the water and the, and, the, and the horizon in the background, 
it's always a much better shot. And for some reason, fish just always look better when they're still alive and not a dead fish. They've got some life to them in motion. And uh, you know, those are pretty much the, the few tips I say. Of course, when you're taking, just like in, in video, when you're taking something with a cell phone, which most people do now, explain why you should shoot it horizontally as opposed to vertical. You hear us saying this all the time, turn your phone horizontal. And for TV purposes, if you look at the shape of your TV on the wall, it's a horizontal shape, it's not a vertical shape. So if you take a picture like this and put it on TV, you're gonna have black, big black bars on either side of it. And there's ways you can blow a photo up, you can make it bigger, but then you detriment the quality of it. So that's why you always want, if, you, if you're sending a picture in for TV and you intend us to use it, turn your phone sideways, it'll be the best quality that we can use, along with some of the things you said, be mindful of where the sun's positioned. But it's a double-edged sword sometimes, Don, because right. Sometimes you'll get people squinting, and you know you don't always want to have people squinting. So, kind of keep in mind whenever you're taking a photo how it looks if you intend to send it in. Another thing too I want to add to that is make sure, of course, there's no shadows on your face. But a lot of times you'll see people that take a, a photo underneath a awning or a roof or a campsite, and the person will be in the in the light, but the the fish will be in the shadow. So always make sure your your subject and your animal or your fish are always lit up. And as far as, uh, you know, now with modern technology, the low cost on good equipment, a lot of people are taking their own videos so that they can kind of preserve the hunt. Some people set up GoPros on their boats or on their deer stands. Tell us about the use of a GoPro because you've used that a lot and also now more and more people are getting into use of drones. Yeah. Yeah, drones is a whole, that's a whole discussion for a whole another day, but I know a lot more and more people are using them. With a GoPro, there's a couple tips I can give with a GoPro. What I like to do when I'm in a boat is uh, I use a clamp. I like to use a clamp a lot. That way you can move it to different, you always know, not always the same angle on the boat. So if you have it set up, you catch three or four fish and you want to move it to a different angle of the boat, get another look. It's almost like you have a second camera in the boat, but it's the same one. A tip that I want to give for GoPro, this is kind of like for editing purpose. Gary Krause, who helps us out a lot on this show, gave me this tip before. A lot of people set their GoPro up, they turn it on and they just let it run, you know, for an hour, an hour and a half at a time. And then when you go back and you're looking at that video, you have to look through a whole hour of video to find the couple shots you want. So with Gary, the tip that Gary gave me several years ago that I still use all the time is whenever you have your GoPro running, let's say you kill a duck, you catch a fish, turn it off, turn it back on real quick. And that way when you look at the files on the computer, it's going to create a new file. So you know the file at the very end of this file that it just created is going to be the action that you're looking for. And that's kind of a good tip for editing purposes if you're looking at GoPro video. One last tip that was passed along to me a long time when I first got into TV. Uh, a very wise uh, editor told me one time, two things you can't go wrong with, and that is kids and dogs. So make sure you take a lot of pictures and video of your best friends that when it comes to hunting or fishing, your hunting dog and your kids. I want to add something too, Don. A lot of times we get pictures of people taking their phone and they got their their finger halfway in front of the in the screen. So be mindful of where your hands are, your fingers are in the phone, and because uh, we don't want to see fingers covering. And then leave enough space above and on top of the photo because you never know how it's going to fit on a TV screen. Sometimes the position of the picture you might have I might have to make it a little bigger a little smaller and you don't want the person's head to be at the very top of the picture you want to make sure that we're not going to cut their face off or the top of their head off and another very simple thing what you see is what that picture is going to be look at it see how it's framed make sure there's not a lot of clutter you know things that would distract it I mean you know guns or, or vest and things laying around in the scene it's just you and the fish or the game makes a much better picture. I want to say one of my pet peeves, I know fishermen like to do it a lot where they hold the hold the fish out real far. Yeah. Um, and you can sometimes you can tell if a fish is being held out real far how big the hand is and in, in comparison with the person's body behind it. But uh, Mr. Tommy Vadrine that you've seen on this show several times, big speckled trout, trout fisherman in Grand Isle, he showed me a trick one time where if you hold the fish in his back gills, kind of where the fish mask your hand, you can hold it out to where your hand's not blocking the fish. Not only does it give the fish impression that it's that it's larger, but it also shows the beauty. You're not blocking any of the color of the you know speckled trout or redfish, whatever you're holding. Good display. Good tips. 
Send them to us, Gary at ParadiseLouisiana.com. We'll be right back with the Berkeley Abu Garcia Fishing Report on Paradise, Louisiana. It was the night before Christmas, and out in the yard, you stumbled upon a Benny's gift card. The most versatile card around is such a treat. A gift to make their car spiffy, sparkling, and neat. With a Benny's gift card, there's so much to do. So gift a card for them and get a free car wash for you. Ask me about my Tempur-Pedic. Ask me how fast I fall asleep. Why not talk to someone who's sleeping on the most highly recommended bed in America? Ask me about staying asleep. Tempur-Pedic owners are more satisfied than owners of any traditional mattress brand. Ask me how it feels after 10 years. Tempur-Pedic, the most highly recommended bed in America. Ask about Tempur-Pedic at Olin's, where you know you always get the guaranteed low price. Olin's is the only store in Baton Rouge and Lafayette with the full line of Tempur-Pedics. Welcome to the Paradise, Louisiana Hunting Report. This time of the year, Christmas, New Year's, this is the peak of Louisiana hunting, and we've got a lot of seasons that are reopening. Yeah, right now, the conservation order, by the way, it, it'll still be running, and it's gonna run through this weekend, December 15th, that's Friday. Then we open up all, all three zones are open up Saturday, December the 16th. Uh, the coastal zone and them are going to run through January 21st. The east zone is going to run all the way to January 28th. Uh, the, the geese, the red geese, December 16th to February 11th statewide. And that, that's, you know, that's speckle bellies and, 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 and the Canada geese, the lesser Canada, mm -hmm. all of them will be running through them. Uh, your rabbit, squirrel, and quail, just like always, and in neutral, they're going to run through February 28th. They, they open, they're gonna stay open until February 28th. Probably after the first year. We got too many deer seasons, me to mention in too many areas. So you can go to Wildlife and Fishers website and pick them up or any of the magazines. They, they'll put them out, the sportsman magazine. But I'm just gonna tell you this, you also had the rut for the deer seasons. Y'all ran a, a calendar. calendar. Yeah. It mm -hmm. works out really oh, good for people mm -hmm. deer hunt. But, Listen, the, 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 the rabbit hunters right now are itching to get in the woods. And they got some wildlife and fisheries have altered a few things so these people can go and hunt. Uh, Don, Chris is, he's cheating. He's eating, he's finally eating a few cracklings and stuff like that. Yeah, but you know, he's not on this side of the camera. He can do that. Oh, he's okay. not talking, but so it's he's, hurt he's good. Us. He's okay. Me and you, I don't know about you, but it's hurting me. But look, you, you got, but say rabbit hunters are dying to get in the woods, so some of those clubs are making efforts to let mm -hmm. the rabbit hunters go in there and deer hunters are getting out, killing their limit or whatever. So, woodcock, that's your baby. Yeah. You know, I don't know, but well, you're getting some great reports. Woodcock opens December the 18th. That's his coming Monday. Right. Uh, through January 31st. So that, that's a big one we're looking for. And doves, people are living. 
December 17th through January the 15th. And don't forget that endangered species, quail, is still open if you can find some outside of the, the hunting preserves. There's plenty of them there. Right, right. You got all the preserves. And uh, that, that's, that's the seasons now. Let's, let's see about the people have been having some success here. I got some deer. They came in, the mother first deer. That's what I like to hear. The young kids with mm -hmm. first deer, Seth Amade, uh was fishing with his granddad. Uh, had his brand new 243. Thanks to his granddad, Randy Dago, sent me that. Brian Hutchinson, big friend of ours at United Equipment. Uh, he got out there and killed a, a, a nice, he called a snow one in Norwood. He said they finally started showing him. He, he spotted about six deer in. So far in the season, before that snow, he ain't seen they one. Easy to spot six. in the snow, aren't they? He, he they stand him. out. <laughs> I know. What? Well, he got to. He said he got camp meat. He he didn't one big him. enough to to harvest that, but they need a little camp meat. Christmas time coming up. Make sausage, whatever you want to do it. <laughs> I don't know how you can beat bad balls though. You making sausage? You keep coming over here. You you got everything. Anything you want. Meat. Christmas party. Camp parties. I know I'm, I got to get through, Don. You told me to hurry up. K. Lita, 11 years old, killed his fourth deer already in a Marpaw swamp. And if you look at this picture, that's why I said it looked like they were in Colorado or South Dakota somewhere. He's a student at St. Teresa and Gonzalez. And uh, it, it's just a beautiful picture. And our friend Brett Rollins uh, took advantage of the split. He hunted in Calahula Paris and killed this beautiful duck. It's beautiful deer He's right here. He's on a here. roll. Way to go, Brett. That's all. If y'all want to know who Brett is, that's the younger, bigger brother of Lynn Rollins, the voice of the Tigers, the uh, best broadcaster in the state of Louisiana. That's what I got on that now. All right, speaking of duck hunting. Yeah, now I'm ready. We got the season reopening in all three zones this Saturday, December the 16th. You going to be out there? No, uh, I might go that morning close. I'm gonna go with my brother, I'll run down and slide out and hunt around me, but uh, I got that Christmas party, Saturday mm -hmm. night. And, uh, nothing, nothing takes away from a Christmas party, it's a family. All the brothers, all the kids, nephews, about 80 of us. I'll be in my duck blind in the radio station. I got a little blind built in. Yeah, you'd be ready. Yeah, we'll be hearing them, we'll be hearing them out in the blinds. We'll get reports coming in. All right. And I think the reports are gonna be good. All, right. All what, of this cold weather, what snow. What are some of the reports that you get? Oh, Birds have got to be flocking in. Well, they haven't, nobody went out to hunt, and with the weather we had last weekend, there wasn't a whole lot of people just willing to go run around and scout early in the morning when you had snow and you know freezing temperatures. So there was we'll a lot see. of people, though, a lot of reports. Yeah. Wildlife and fishers have got to fly out. We have mm -hmm. to hear more about that next week, along with the report. I'm sure Saturday morning you're going to have them all there at, mm -hmm. at Duck Central, but. Uh, uh, we, could, we, we hear from people saying ducks are showing up, especially up in the north now. Wayne Amato, Rick Capo, Steve Anderson, and all those boys, and Wayne's son, Dean, they, they got a certain place they hunt. Uh, we used to hunt the timber, but they've been hunting the, the fields, been all the speckle beds in there, and mallards showed up. That cold weather pushed them in. They sent me this picture in this. This big long blind they got over there, not far from DeWitt, Arkansas. This is where they had it. I thought somebody shot us. Huh? We better give it. That's what's good about being in a place of business, though. Well, we ain't by ourselves. I love it. Let me tell you this, though. That was, that's some beautiful speckle bellies. And Wayne's one of the best callers around. Can't beat him. He's real good. He's, you know, that makes a lot of difference on him. On the speck of One more thing on duck hunting, uh, if you're going to be going out late season like this, the later you go, the better chances you got of getting a really pretty bird to mount. If you're looking to get like a pintail or a wood duck or even a mallard, typically you're going to find them in their full winter plumage the later you get into it during a cold year like this. So good luck on that. Yeah, and uh, I, I'll tell you, I may find my paper. I don't want to miss no Bobby. Bobby Black, my good good friend, you've hunted mm -hmm. over there, up there. The tensile, his lease, they're not in the fields, but you will not believe the ducks that are in the, the breaks right now. Same thing come from Kobe Daniels. Kobe told mm -hmm. me, he said, Mr. Gary, we're killing birds. But it's unbelievable, the gray ducks, and even the mallards right now in the breaks and in the timber. So and that was a big one. Uh, I, I, it seems to me, he hunted with so many pigeons, 
people that he's bringing in, his clients, his cousins, and friends. I'm going to name them real quick. Chris Ham, Carson Crouch, Will Rapp, Rafford, Jake Spencer, Matt Manuel, Brian Farrell, and they're all limited out in the timber. So they're mostly mallards and gray ducks. So uh, we got a first duck, Olivia Dozak, and a beautiful green winged teal. What's so special about this? Her stepdaddy said, it's so special because her mama's first duck was a green winged teal. Her brother's first duck, green winged teal. He says his whole living room gonna be covered with green winged teal. And I want to congratulate to Tuna Dennison for sending me that. So and it's like uh, uh, like mother, like brother, like sister, huh? Well, and daughter. The word is right now, there are ducks showing up. The ones that have been bad, I can't wait to hear the air folk that is the one that's normally good. Gator on them started off great. They ain't been killing any birds in there. No no birds, like it's said in uh, Calahula. They, they wouldn't kill them. All of a sudden they would kill them. They had to stay late to kill any birds at all. So the last, last week, so we'll find out. The best part about being a member of a Touchstone Energy Cooperative is that it's your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. That's the power of your co-op membership. Demco, your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. Sosa the Coast is a nonprofit organization. And a lot of times life can become um, appointment to appointment. This shakes things up a little bit. You know, the majority of the battle that you have is in your mind. When you get a chance to do something uh, outdoors, I know for me, it's just a chance that you just get your mind off it. You start focusing on something different. Being in the outdoors, being on the water is, is great medicine. If you are someone that you know, could use a dose of the coast. You can go to doseofthecoast.org to apply or to nominate someone. And if you would like to volunteer, you can also reach us at our website under the contact form. Aggressive, modern, and durable. The latest advancement in spinning has the Revo name on it, and almost a century of fishing expertise in it. No matter where your passion takes you, world-class fishing is only a Revo away. Pause moving and storage. We just sold our house. Congratulations. We have two weeks to move. We'll deliver a few containers. Our new home's not ready. No problem. You can store things with us while you're between homes. We might need help. We'll refer trusted packers. We'll be staying at my brother's. Well, that sounds... He has kids of his own. Well... Five of them. Ma'am? Help. Trust us for local and long-distance moving and store at our storage centers. Pods. Moving and storage solved. All right, on this episode of Dockside TV, we got a real early start. Started at the crack of dawn. Came out of the pass right here, Cross Lake Pontchartrain. Had a beautiful sunrise rising right over the twin span. As we had approached our first uh, stop, we fished some real shallow, grassy areas. Started off with some top water, threw a little jerk baits, and we were fishing real shallow stuff. 
you know, one to two foot of water, started picking off some nice trout, even caught, um, even caught a couple of bass and, and uh, on top of some of the grass beds over there. Now, as the sun came up a little bit more, we decided to come up, come back across Lake Pontchartrain and fish some deeper bayous and canals that we know that are holding grass on the shorelines. And like we said, and we've been preaching this over the last couple episodes, grass is the key until water temperatures get a little bit cooler. So in the, when we get into the uh, deeper canals, or when we got in there on this particular day, that we've caught some really nice fish and what we would do is we might go 10 20 minutes without a bite down a shoreline but when we would catch one it'd be nice schools of them packed in together within a 10 or 20 yard stretch and we would just milk it out and in this area we was pretty much 90 percent throwing the matrix minnow jerk bait ripping it right out of the grass catching some pretty nice fish all right i switched over to the matrix shad Three eighths ounce jig head. Fishing a little bit deeper water. Started off with top waters this morning in the shallows. Moved over to the jerk bait as the water temperature rose a little. And now it's midday and we're using the matrix shad. Just bumped into this good redfish right here. There's a one witty. There's one witty. Now let's just film the. Alright, just now we had a, a nice red hooked. When I got it right at the surface, right by the boat, there was another one with him trying to eat the lure out of his mouth. So Noah was trying to get him with his lure. He's still throwing the Matrix Minnow. So what I do, or what you always want to do when you do see that situation is leave your fish right in the water and you got a real good chance of doubling up. Unfortunately, my fish came on button. Not only did he not catch one, we missed them both. So it is what it is. Let's see if we can get a few more. All right, well, we had a really fun day fishing multiple spots, throwing top waters, jerk baits, matrix sheds on the bottom. And all of these products that we use day in and day out can be found at matrixshed.com. And if you ever want to learn how to fish with all of these different items that we manufacture, simply watch all of our Docs Eye TV episodes. That can be found on YouTube, Vimeo, MajorShare.com, and multiple other places. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for all our ne next ones coming up in the future as we make one almost every other week. And until next time, good fishing. And we hope you enjoyed that fishing feature and tips with Chaz uh, Champagne of Dockside TV. You can always watch it if you just go to DocksideTV.com. Getting to our Berkeley Abu Garcia fishing report, Gary, let's start off. Was there any offshore fishing at all? Cold I, weather, this time of year, not a lot of reports coming in. I didn't hear. <laughs> nobody called, nobody heard. A lot of the guys offshoring right now got their boats on dry dock and doing something else. Mm -hmm. Or they, they hunt. Even some of the captains are hunting right now. You know, Chris Moran right. and all them, his wife's a great big hunter. Her, her daddy has a... a, a a place, a lodge, and them a hunting reserve. So I, I've been hearing nothing. You know, most of these guys are killing hogs and killing their deer and sitting in the stand. Same thing with Tokefield. And them, I, I guess Ryan Lambert just sitting there waiting on the ducks. But uh, uh, I see a lot of them going to high school championship games or whatever. So I ain't hearing nothing on the fishing. The well, if you uh, have any offshore fishing reports, we'd love to get them. Just send them to us, Gary at ParadiseLouisiana.com and include those pictures and photos and video like we explained to you in the last segment how to send them to us. Inshore salt water, we heard, you know, one of the inklings come from Bayou Coast Kayak Fishing Club, 29 expert fishermen out there competing, not one of them could catch a speckled trout. Speckled trout have been scarce because water temperature drops, they go deep, they go lethargic, it's hard to catch them. The sun comes up and they'll move though. You get a little activity so you then. Doing it. And you, so, that's another thing I was telling you about fishing in the wintertime. If you're not hunting or doing blast and cast, stay in the bed. Stay there and watch the tide, okay, and watch the wind. But uh, I notice when I'm fishing redfish in the wintertime, when I'm fishing all these ponds and in the marsh, I'm not, I'm not fishing the lee side. I'm fishing the windy side because they burn that bait fish. Bait fish will start moving. They're seeing a lot of, a lot of bait fish 
in Grand Isle right now. Tommy Vidrain and them were seeing uh, minnows on top of the water. I hear people from Lake Pontchartrain are see, seeing glass minnows all around the bridges and the trusses. Still getting reports from the trusses. Ken, Ken Lambert and his brother Harold and them are going out, not catching many. Sometimes it's cold, they, they don't want to stay out there that long. And that, now, when the wicks will still be cold and wind is not blowing, uh, you can still catch a lot of fish. The best way I'm here in the catching them, you the same way. They're either catching Carolina rigs, they're catching them uh, drop shotting, or they're catching them with the slip cork. So that's where they are when they're fishing the bridge. The other place, plastics under a cork, everywhere you go, short troops been a good bait, the old bait, H and H sparkle beetle, uh, chairs in them, and you know, naturally they, they fish in the matrix shad. Two colors, they're catching a lot of bass. You know the most of the bass are being caught on? Live shrimp. That's everywhere. Down in Brenton Sound, mm -hmm. uh, Hopedale, Delacroix, the fish are being caught on live shrimp. It's a no-brainer. If you're going down there, you want to catch redfish, specks, and all three, bring you some live bait. And most of the, the marinas I talk to got live bait. Uh, Dulac is another place you told y'all last year. We're seeing them coming in. Uh, Highway 11 bridge, Kevin Ayo with his dad. They're fishing the truss on Carolina rig. You see his catching that big fish. Guy sent me a picture. The Johnson family always sending me pictures. They tried to make a snow fish. Now instead of snowman, they made a snow fish. Now look at that tail. Tell me what you think it is. I think it's a Jack Gravel. I told him, I sent him back a letter and said, you're gonna show a tail, you ought to show a redfish with a, with a dot on it, huh? Look at this, look at that picture. Uh, the rigger leaves, Jimmy Durio, fishing live shrimp, caught a lot of specks, and his big red fish are running on. They also caught bass. And our longtime friend I ain't heard from, Bill Bingham, fishing Sabine with his family. He had his two daughters out there and his grandson, uh, Owen, uh, caught redfish, caught specks, took some pictures, some pretty depth, also caught bass. Most of them they caught with bass. He said he caught almost 19 bass. And I'm glad he's coming back in. And I, that's all on the coast I got. Well, one thing I want to add, uh, Robbie Campo at Campo's Marina reminded me of something last week on the radio fishing reports. When the weather gets really cold, hard cold like this, and you're in an area where you've got shallow marshes and you've got deep canals or deep bayous, that's where those redfish are going to be. And that Bayou Lutri, which makes a loop all the way from Shell Beach to Hopedale, people gang up on the banks there. You don't even need a boat. Just get out there, fish on the bottom with dead shrimp, and you, most people come away easily catching their five fish redfish limit. Well, if you fish in Leeville and those others, and, uh, Tommy Vidrine and them are still fishing the rocks when they get out there. And people fishing off, especially when you got a north wind, a cold north wind, they're fishing. When you're going into Grand Isle, you fish the right side. That north wind is coming across that road. The other side's usually muddy. The water be running through those culverts. The tide be high, and they fishing on that right bank, on Highway One. Cockaho minnows, they readily available at all the bait shops. Live shrimp, a tsunami. Y'all say I said tsunami. We talked about it last week, but a tsunami. Now, I don't know, I heard they had a run at uh, Rouse's on salami. <laughs> yeah. You couldn't find All a pack of them. Like, or bologna, both of them were out of stock last week. Well, yeah. I tell you what, I love you. I don't know what I'm going to do <laughs> when, you go, when you leave out here. But I'm, I'm going to tell you this, that, that's the best fish report you can get. I know it's long, but uh, it's very thorough and it makes sense. And these are people that don't lie to me. Now, going to freshwater. All right, let's get to it. I got some Sacolay reports that are unbelievable. Got some bass reports and some Sacolay reports from Pat's Bay. Anybody know where Pat's Bay and uh, in those areas? They're going back there. You can put in a saw. You can put in even run up north from Pigeon. But most people, you put in a saw on this side. Uh, Jack Miller's, they fishing, catching some beautiful bass and also the if you get around those grass beds or back up in there around Bay Natchez, and they're catching sackalay on a jig. They're catching black and chartreuse jig, or that the new jig I was, what's the name tells us about all the time, 
the Bobby Gaulin one that looks mm -hmm. like a little flat tail. They got a blue, blue color to it. That's what they catch them on. Old River, I got a call Sunday morning, David Pizzolata, usually asking for information, but David's getting real good right now. He says, they've been catching the biggest sack that you caught in two or three years from Old River. They fish in the pilings on the piers. Not the houseboats and enough stuff, but on the pilings on the pier, they're hugging the pilings, using that Bobby Garland bait in eight to 10 foot of water. And uh, he didn't send me any pictures, he said, but most of these sack are running close to two pounds. And that, that is slab. So uh, I got Rusty Capo was calling. We, we, we had death in our family, Rusty's stepdaddy and my uncle. Uh, passed away, my, my uncle Gus. But we went in, in the meantime, we started talking fishing. He said, Rusty said, man, he said, I went up there to watch them boys hunt. I didn't want to hunt and get out in the cold. I went out and got in a boat. He was fishing those lakes around Lake Natchez and the Monterey, uh, Black Lake, mm -hmm. and all those areas. Took his jig, he said, another place, catching a big sack. He didn't catch a lot of numbers, but all those lakes in that area right now catching big sack of lake. Sack of lake, Chifuncta River. Keith Lusher sent me a picture. He fished with a couple of guys on the Chifuncta, fishing some structure kind of deep down and caught some really nice sack of lake. Uh, and our friend, uh, Mr. Green, uh, he, uses, he uses that Bobby Garland bait too. He's had some really nice trips in Bayou Lacombe catching sockeye, and he tell you that's his favorite fish to catch. I, I tell you what, both of them need to do a show with us. I'm gonna go over there and do a show and make sure we're doing it good. So we see that's what I love about being here. People coming in here right now, and they want to talk. Then I, Y'all can talk, and I'm getting ready when we get out of well, here. Well, we're just about ready to get out of here, and you and maybe we'll leave the camera on and watch what you can do with this trailer here right here. I'm going to take it with me. It's going, I know, some kind of way. Don't forget, send your information in, your photos, your videos, your reports, Gary at ParadiseLouisiana.com, and we'll be back again next week with another edition of Paradise, Louisiana. Paradise, Louisiana is presented by Demco, your touchstone energy cooperative. Pods, moving and storage, solved. Baton Rouge Coca-Cola Bottling Company, Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change, Louisiana Fish Fry Products, and by CCA Louisiana and the CCA Louisiana Star Tournament.